I mean, you guys have seen it, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time. But um, the so um, I, I know we kind of did this already, but let me. This is reinforce the report. All right. So we have when we're talking about our cost curves, we have basically there's two sets of costs. All right. So there's the um, variable fixed and total cost. That's you know our our cut and dry cost, and then there's the variable cost, which is total fixed variable cost divided by units of output. All right, um, so, and if there's any questions at this point, please let me know. I mean, it's really important that we clarify it at this point, because we're going to turn the page here in a minute, and it's going to be, make the assumption that you got it, you know. All right, so the variable costs, well, just define, big part, define fixed costs real fast. Costs that don't vary with quantity of output. Okay, costs that don't vary with quantity with, with output. Um, variable costs, costs that do. Okay, costs that go up or down based on um, output. Um, total cost is just a summation between fixed and variable. No problem. So you add your fixed, you add your variable together, and of course you have your total cost. All right, so you have average total cost. Somebody define average costs in general. I mean, it, it applies to all three, but what, what's the average cost as defined? What is it? Total cost divided by amount of units. Okay, so it's the cost, whether it's variable, fixed, total, whatever, divided by units of output. And so, for example, we have total, um, sorry, variable, average, where the hell is it? <laughs> average fixed cost is just fixed cost divided by, you see the first one is $3, so it's, we, we have one unit of output, so $3 divided by one, $3. Second, we, we make two units of output, now we have um, average fixed cost is fixed cost, $3 divided by two, so it's $1.50, et cetera. Everybody okay with that? Right, the variable cost is, the average variable cost is obviously variable cost divided by units of output. And so we have variable cost over here of 30 cents divided by 1 is 30. 80 cents divided by 2 is 40. Dollar uh, 50 divided by 3 is 50 cents. And so you see your average variable cost increasing at an increasing rate. What causes the, the, the property to increase at an increasing rate? What's that called? Diminishing marginal product. Diminishing marginal product. And in a sentence, in layman's terms, what is causing diminishing marginal product? Um, yeah, um, that's true. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit more into that. So what causes Sorry. diminishing marginal product? Not that that's wrong or anything, but just add. Say it again? Well, yeah. So, so what causes diminishing marginal product? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Efficiency is the issue. Say it in a sentence. People bumping into each other and causing... There you go. People people just start to run into each other. <coughs> or the good apples get picked first, and then the second worker has to climb a little step ladder, so their output is falling a little bit, right? All right, um, and then average total cost is just the total cost divided by units of output, and so obviously uh, the average total cost for one unit is $3.30. That would be your fixed, your variable cost added together divided by units of output. Um, for the second unit of output, your fixed and your variable added together is a dollar. Uh, where are we at? Uh, fixed and variable added together is a dollar ninety. Um, is that okay? I kind of lost my train of thought there. It gets confusing. So is that, everybody okay with that? All right. Um, and then lastly, marginal cost. You find that real fast. What's marginal cost? Cost to making one more unit. Okay, cost to make one more unit. Um, and marginal cost is the same as variable cost, average variable cost. No. Is the marginal cost and the average variable cost the same? No. Mm -hmm. All right, which obviously according to this graph, which is, is rising faster? Marginal. Marginal cost. Uh, so marginal cost rises more quickly than average variable cost. So average variable cost is going 30, 40, 50, 60, whereas the marginal cost is going in increments of 20 cents, so it's going 30, 50, 70, et cetera. And then to, to glean marginal cost is the cost <coughs> to make one more unit. So, so in in this case, you see um, the average. Um, where are we at? The total cost. Let me do the variable cost just easier. So, to make one unit is three dollars or three dollars and thirty cents, right? So the the marginal cost is thirty cents, right? Are we okay with that? How much does it cost to make the second unit, the number two? 50. To make another unit, how much does it cost us? Fifty cents. Fifty cents, which is the difference between the thirty and the eighty. So, so to make number two, it costs us an additional 50 cents. Okay? Everybody cool with that? All right. Um, now, these, um, I don't like that graph. 
So the average total cost curve. Average total cost increases at an increasing rate. And what's the reason? What's the reason? It's based on the fixed cost, average fixed cost. Mm, no, that's right. Simpler than that. It's the same thing. What causes total cost to increase at an increasing rate? Diminishing marginal product. Right. Which is defined as. People don't get the details. There you go. Okay, so. Average total cost increases at an increasing rate due to people bumping into each other. It gets less efficient as you add more workers. Um, and then what happens, and, and make sure you understand this, is that the average total cost as you increase your output is that, let me back up to this table, it just makes it a little, or I'm sorry, this curve here, to see a little clearer for me. Um, that, that, so you have zero units of output, you have a uh, total cost of $30, zero units of output, and that's representing your fixed cost, right? <clears throat> As you add one worker, what's the cost of that worker? $10. Ten bucks, right? And so how much output, how much marginal output are you getting? You add one worker, marginal output is what? Uh, Goes from, from here to here. How much do you get? Fifty. Fifty, right? So, so it's costing you ten more bucks. And you're getting 50 more units of output. Everybody cool with that? And so you have a per unit cost there. Um, if it's 10 bucks and you're getting 50 units of output, how much is each unit costing you? 20 cents. Is that right? I think so. I, it's kind of too much math for my head real quick. Is that, is that, I'm somebody can get a calculator. 50 divided computer. by 20. Is it 20 cents? Hold on. 50 divided by 20. Um, 50 divided, it's 10, it cost us $10 and we got 50 units. So how much does each unit cost? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it cost us $10, like so we got 50 basic. units. So $10 divided by 50. 20 cents. Okay. Get, keep I was formula. right. All right. Yeah, okay. So each <laughs> unit cost us 20 cents, right? <clears throat> okay, then... We hire the next day or the next hour, or whatever. We hire a second worker. How much does that worker cost us? Ten bucks. Ten bucks, right? The the per day pay or per hour pay is the same. How much contribution of product did that second worker bring to us? Forty. Forty. How much does each unit for the second worker cost? Oops. So would it would it be divided by um, ninety However instead? However you did the first one. <laughs> would, it, would it be divided by ninety instead? No, 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 no. Well, you can, that's the average, but, but just per worker. Oh, per I, I understand worker. what you're saying. Just, just do it per 40 worker. 40 divided by 20 divided by 40, or 10 divided by 40. I, my computer eats balls there. Sorry. That was inappropriate. Did you say what I think <laughs> I'm you just sorry. said? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Why did you throw that over there? 40 divided by what? We have a, we have a, a ball eating uh, computer. A straight computer problem. 25 cents, 25 cents. Okay, so now, each unit, if you, the, you hire the second worker, the, the per worker pay is still $10, $10 per day or per hour, whatever. And they're contributing 40 units. And so each unit now is costing us 25 cents for the second worker, right? All right, we'll do it one more time. So no, but how, now the computer's okay. That's just measuring like per worker because yeah. when you average it all together, it's actually less. Yeah, well, it, it's true. I mean, you could you could say, well, all right, we'll just take like, let's say with three workers, we're getting um, 120 output, you know? Mm -hmm. And so three workers is $30, and we're getting 120 output. So well, what's, cents. how much? 25 cents. 25 cents. So if you added another worker, it'll be 40 divided by 140. You see what I'm saying? Just 20, 29 cents. 20, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So it's the same principle. It's just that I, I at least for me anyway, I just keep it per, per worker. So it's just per, yeah, per measure. Yeah, it just makes it easier. I mean, but but you could average them together if okay. you wanted to. It just makes it simpler. All right, so, so does everybody kind of understand that? Everybody cool? And so you, each worker costs another $10. But I'm getting, you know, per worker less and less units of output. And then as a function of that, each time I add a worker, it costs me the same, but the per cost of the unit is going up. Everybody okay with that? Go ahead, Rick. Sorry to kind of interrupt you. Uh, no, I, I just didn't, I didn't see where you got, when you had the second worker, where you got that 40 from. But, um, so the, are you okay with that? No. Okay, well, that's right. Um, so the second worker, so... Zero workers cost us 30, 30 bucks, which is what, Rick? What, what, what is that 30 bucks? What, what cost is that? Uh, okay, good. So
So we add one worker and it costs us an additional 10 bucks, right? Yeah. So the cost goes from here to here, right? Clear? Oh, okay. I and and, and so that worker is contributing 50 units of output, right? And then each unit is 20 cents, I think she said. Okay. Right? Now, the second worker, you, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the second worker costs us an additional 10 bucks. So now we're up to 50. And then that worker is contributing from here to here. <coughs> Okay, so continues to fall, but at a decreasing rate. Okay, so tell me why. Because it's, the cost stays the same, it's just divided into bigger pieces. Okay, good. And so the cost number change, I'm just going to make that a little more easier for me. All right, so, so the, the cost is consistent, it's $3, and it's getting divided by 2, 3, 4, by so, so it falls very quickly at first, and then, and then will continue to fall forever, but at a decreasing rate, because it's getting divided by, eventually divided by 100, and then 101, and then 102, and the, the, the cost is still $3, getting divided by 100, 101, and then the increments there is very, very small, right? All right, so, so it falls very fast at first, continues to fall forever, but at a decreasing rate. Average variable cost, what does it do? It starts down here at 30 cents. Okay, what does it do? It rises slowly at first, but continues to rise at okay. a decreasing rate. Okay, good. So average variable cost rises kind of slowly at first, and then increases at an increasing rate due to what? Diminishing marginal product. Diminishing marginal product. Diminishing marginal product, the property whereby workers start to bump into each other. Right? They, and that's just real. I mean, I don't answer the question, but the concept is what's important. So the workers get less efficient because they're starting to conflict with each other. Right? So the average variable cost, as, as you guys just said, is it starts low, starts um, to increase at an increasing rate, starts off very um, flat, and then increases at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product, right? All right, then you have the average total cost. And average total cost is simple because it's just a summation between the two, right? It's just this plus this, and this is $3 here, and it's 30 cents here, right? So, so the average fixed cost is just a combination of the two, right? And then average fixed cost is, I'm sorry, average total cost is average fixed, average variable cost added together. And it does this, right? So why is it falling? Why is average fixed cost, sorry, Randy, why is average fixed cost falling? It depends on, um, why is average fixed cost falling? Average, sorry, I did it again. Average total cost, I'm so sorry. Because I, it's I, dependent, I'm adding confusion at here. first it's dependent on, on the average fixed cost. Okay, good. So average total cost is falling at first because it's being derived more or a larger percentage. 
percentage of it is being derived from average fixed, fixed costs. costs. All right, so it reaches some point where these two intersect, right? Where they intersect, then what happens to the average total cost curve? What happens? It starts to go back up, right? Tell me why. Because it relies more on average variable cost at that point. Right, because average variable cost is now greater than average fixed cost, and average variable cost is rising faster than this is falling, right? All right, so, so it reaches some point where it bottoms out, and what's that called? Efficient scale. Efficient. Okay, and that's you know, the very important concept. If, okay, efficient scale, all right, which is where average total cost bottoms out. And efficient scale is also where average fixed and average variable cost intersect. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's, you, you're right, um, and really, really what it does is it, according to this, is it's doing, it's kind of hard to draw, but it does this, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's going up in increments of 10 cents, so it's a way to go. <coughs> so is this just like that because it's <laughs> Yeah, exactly, just the, it's just a nice, easy, um, and it's got the um, algorithm to it, so, so that you can, um, Kind of deduce, you know, that, that if it was 10 cents, 10 cents, then it'll be 10 cents again. That, and it's just to keep it simple. Um, in the book, for example, they use one that has a, um, you know, that's truly curving up and the cost is actually increasing. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. I just but to make sure yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. So does that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. If you had, had a firm and you wanted to, So, so now you can double the size of this and then... So you're doubling your fixed cost starting over with the curve. Right. There's a, there's um, a point of you the know, there's, scale. There's, I, I get it. There's, there's actually two things that can happen. And, and um, you know, forgive me for not probably elaborating as much as I could, um, but just to, in the interest of time, keep moving ahead, but to answer your question, is that one thing could happen is that this could all shift down and then this number becomes six, and then everything else doubles. That's one possibility, right? And then the other possibility is that you get a copy of this over here in store number two. Yeah? So, so those are the two possible answers I see off the top of my head. And, and we're actually going to talk about the long and the short run. And give me a, when we get into PC, and let me see if that answers. I mean, that's profitable time to uh, split the conquer, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and, and there is a point where we, we can deduce where that is, actually. I'll, I'll, as we get into PC, let me show you. I'll point well, it out. I think what he was asking is if uh, the most efficient point to do that is at the efficient scale right there. Where Say that again. So I, I think what he's asking is if when you would want to do that is when you're at the efficient scale. Oh, oh I got you. Uh, yeah, that, I got you. Well, when you're at the efficient scale, though, and you divide like that, No longer the efficient. Maximum efficiency is still double. Right. I see what you're saying. And, and then this whole process starts over. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Um, give, give me some time. Let me see if I can answer that. Because we do talk about that expansion as we go. Give, let me see if I can answer it. Okay. I was trying to. I was just trying to connect it with practical use. Yeah. I, no. No. It has practical use, but I wonder if there was. A, I was just wondering if there was a particular. That's totally legit, and there is a note. Yeah, we're going to get to it. Good question. All right. Um. Everybody okay with this? Questions? Where are we going to produce? 
the efficient scale. Okay, everybody cool with that? Intercept, the efficient scale, this bottom down. You can explain the curve here, why. You can explain the curve here, why. You can explain the curve here, why. Yes, ma'am.
Commodities markets, just, just FYI, I mean, it's not on the exam or anything, just a piece of info, is that, um, you know the stock market, the, you know, Wall New Street. York Stock Exchange, Wall Street? Well, they have, I don't, let me, I'm gonna, I don't want to get too far off track. Do, do you guys know what the Dow is? Mm -hmm. the, the, the Dow is actually, it, you think it's all the stocks and bonds out there, but it's actually not. It's only 300 of them. And the, the Dow, the market, trades, you know, in thousands and thousands and thousands of different kinds of stocks. I mean, you know, anything, any, anybody who wants to incorporate and sell stock can be a Dow member, right? Or, a, I'm sorry, a stock market player. But the Dow, the, ind the index, is really just uh, 300 firms. And, and it's, they, they take these sample firms, you know, like, like uh, I'm making this up, but, you know, we, we'll use Microsoft for our technology. We'll use uh, Walmart for our retail. We'll use, um, you know... Ford for our automobiles, and they take these sample companies, and then the Dow is really just an average of the sample companies. It's not really all the stocks and bonds out there. It's just a really small percentage of them. Do they just pick the highest, the highest grossing stock, or no? It, it's just, it's a really they don't. It's not like high or low. It's just they try to sample across the whole market, and and it's a it's real kind of honor. An yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's a, uh, evidently, I mean, obviously, I don't know, but it's, it's a real honor if, if they ask you to become part of the Dow Index. Like, you're a, you're, you've are you made it when they say, would smart. you become part yeah. of our index? You know, that you're you're exemplifying the market somehow. Does anyway, it remain Does it remain 300, or no, do they it's, add it's, Yeah, it's just 300 maybe. members. And, okay. and, you know, like, what was really important in 1980, um, you know, VCRs. Trying to think of something that's not what VCRs. VC, yeah, yeah. <laughs> RCA VCR division. You know that could sort of be, um, you know, sort of filtered out, and they replace it with uh, put ready. You know what I mean? So, so things change. But yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so when they add someone to the Dow Index, does that mean they have to draw someone? Um. It, well, yeah. Basically, and and but like we just said, it's it's so usually hopefully it's companies that are, you know, that aren't really exemplifying them. It anymore, you know what I mean? Something that's just not as important as it was ten years ago. Yeah. Well, it's like you said. You know, you made it when you they actually put yeah. it out. You yeah. You said you know you lost it and they kick you out. Oh my god! And Man, they out. threw my my hi-fi industry out. My my LP industry. LP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yikes. So my vinyl industry. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, okay, so rabbit hole, let me come back, okay, back to reality. Um, so th there's, an, there's the Dow, everybody understands what that is, the stock market. Well, th there's another one out there that you probably haven't heard as much about, or if you have, it's called the Chicago Mercantile. And it's the same exact thing as the stock market, exactly, except they trade in commodities. And what they trade in is things like pork belly and tomatoes and corn and garlic and, you know, corn. And, and it's the exact same function as the stock market. It's the same, it is a stock market. It's just that they trade in <coughs> tomatoes. And then that trading is how they derive the price of a bushel of tomatoes. It's not just some magic trick. You know, there's a price out there because the Chicago Mercantile says the supply and demand of tomatoes in this country is such that this is the price. Um, and then for a little more context, do, do you, and maybe some of you, it was like way before me, but do you guys remember Eddie Murphy's movie called um, Trading Places? Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Dan do, Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. And, and do you remember the two old fellas that yeah. were betting? They, and for those of you who are familiar with it, is that they were old-timey bond traders on the mercantile. That was their position. And, and uh, that may have context for a few of you, but. All right, um, so let's see. So perfectly competitive markets. Um, you and I, if I sell all my tomatoes, it doesn't impact you at all. The price is derived <laughs> at the mercantile. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Usually agricultural commodities is, is generally the example that we use. Um, any questions about that? How, How does it? Well, not. That slide was it? Uh, many buyers, the seller uh, sets the price. Let me do. I'll go back to make sure. Well, there's a couple of books still writing. Let me. We'll get that. Go back 
Can you tell me what time it is? 10.15. 10 uh, 35 minutes? 10.15. Yes. Quarter of three. So like, when you talk about setting the price of tomatoes, I noticed that like with areas like California, our agriculture is a little less expensive because it, most of it comes from here. A lot of it comes from here. So is it a base price as like a national average or, okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, I know it's, you're right. I mean, every time I think of that, did, did you guys, not to get all, all sidetracked again, but every time I think about that, what you just said, do you guys remember Brad Pitt in California? Uh -huh. Vicious movie. I mean, yeah. did, you, did you guys ever see that? Brad Pitt and um, Julie. Juliet Ju Lewis. No. no. Juliet Lewis. Juliet Lewis. Yeah. Is that right? I think so. And it's just about a serial killer. Does that sound familiar? No? California with a K. California with a K. If you want a, like a movie that'll just like, yeah. wow, <laughs> that's Brad Pitt, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, one he's just a little crazy, and, and one of the things he did is he. You know, they go from New York, I think it is, across the country. And one of the reasons that him and his dingbat wife are going to California is because they can just live in a field and pick oranges and survive. You know what I mean? They don't have to buy any food. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's a movie, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but, yeah. It's so, so, yeah, you're right. There's, there's, it's probably a little bit lower here. You know? So, is, is our price... Does it ever tend to be lower than the mercantile price, or? Um, no, I think I think probably if anything, the mercantile price is driving the price here. Okay. And then and then if just you just based go on to, like import and export out yeah, of the state. Yeah, I was just gonna say like if you go to Minnesota, mm -hmm. you know the mercantile price is three dollars a bushel, but in Duluth, Minnesota, it's three dollars and thirty cents. You know what I'm saying? But but then again, in Minnesota, you know maple syrup costs three dollars, and here it costs. Three Um, oh, sorry. I'm going to go back one slide. Is that what you needed? Mm -hmm. Good? Okay. Um, competitive, competitive. All right. <clears throat> this is, we're kind of, there's like two more slides, and then it's like the holy grail of microeconomics. <laughs> it's like the, <coughs> the point. About diminishing marginal product. Yeah, exactly. About what? Diminishing yeah. marginal product. Oh, uh, well, that's kind of one of the. All right. <laughs> Smart asses. I'll say this. There are many holy grails. <laughs> I will say this that a table has four legs. <laughs> oh, way to go, y'all. <laughs> this is another leg. This is not necessarily true, though. They have three legs. Hi. <laughs> Sometimes they have a the table. Ones, <laughs> table has three or four legs. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one. <laughs> 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 Sometimes it's just one leg one in the middle. Sometimes they're attached to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of table? <laughs> a competitive <laughs> table or a monopolistic table? <laughs> Sometimes you eat on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you sit on the couch. Black 
blackmail. Like ed- edit you know, together like a little just to edit slip of all the times you've said shit bit or crap or Oh, <laughs> 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 um, I actually when I was a younger teacher there was this I'll never forget this this was a I mean it's kind of funny but it wasn't but it was is there was this teacher we were in these kind of adjacent classrooms you know and it was, I was in a computer, I and mean, it wasn't because we needed it, but because it was just the room that was available. And so I was teaching economics and up there, and, and so everybody was sitting kind of, it was really awkward, you know, because everybody had a monitor in front of them, but and I was kind of looking around. It was an economics class. Of course, half the people were like, you know, not paying any attention. And all of a sudden, out of, like, behind me, and do, do you know what I'm talking about, where the classes are, like, connected, but they're not open, and there's a door there, you know what I'm saying, but it's locked. And I hear this female going, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I mean, it was bad. It was really vicious to me. And I turn around, and it's a teacher. What? Yeah, and, and she had, evidently her students had, had sort of found the button, you know, whatever that was, and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it, and she came on, done. And, and it was, wow, I've never seen anything like that, you know, and she was, these poor students were sitting there, I mean, you know, like us, and, and she was like, you effing rapper, 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 and it was like, I don't want to see this, you know what I mean, because I don't want to <laughs> know, wanna <laughs> I don't want to oh. know when they fire her what happened, you know what I mean, and uh, yeah, it was horrible, I've was never here? seen anything like it, yeah. wow. and she then, the story gets even better. Oh. And then, so she she has, okay, so she curses out, I mean, you know, I mean, really vicious, really vicious. And and they put her on administrative leave. And, you know, the, the cover-up is, oh, she just had a breakdown, her dog died, and she needed a few days, you know, whatever. Well, like reason. Mariah Carey, you know. What's that? Like Mariah Carey. Oh, yeah, breakdown. yeah, exactly. And so they put her on administrative <laughs> leave. There you go. She come and uh, she comes back, and if I remember right, she was teaching a um, some sort of a language. I think it was like French or something. Pretty, I mean, pretty hoity-toity, you know. And she's teaching this French class. They bring her back. You know, she gets written up, I guess, or whatever they do. I don't know. You know, whatever. They bring her back. And do you guys know what um, Rosetta Stone is? Yeah. Is that something? Like? It's a, it's a program, I guess, where they teach languages, right? I've, yeah, right. And um, anyway, so she she puts this class the next semester, gives them Rosetta Stone, tells them good luck with that, and she takes off to um, New Zealand. And she's gone the whole semester. And the students are in there on Rosetta Stone trying to learn French, and she's nowhere to be found. What? <laughs> yeah, she, she never showed up. <laughs> and uh, last I heard, last well, of course she lost her job, you know. But that was that was one of the more wild. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It was like, did she ever come good. back from? Oh no, no, no. She, she, you know, they let her go after she that. She made them. If she made them buy the Rosetta Stone, that's one. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that why that? that? And then I, and then she goes on vacation. <laughs> and that was crazy. Wait, like yeah. like legitimately like the whole semester. Yeah, she was gone the whole semester. Like, like none, of the, none of the people yeah, were saying anything. That's the funny thing. It's like you think in week three, somebody <laughs> might say, hey, you know, is there a teacher in here somewhere? You know, somebody in a grade up? But no, she went like the uh, like ever. 16 weeks yeah, and nobody complain. said a word. Did you see the movie Bad Teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Just something like she yeah. did. Well, this, so uh, I felt good. kind of that's bad that's for her because piece. she really had a, a horrible two A plus in French. French. French, exactly. All right. Um... However you have a new, let me get through this telling story. I have another teacher story I can tell you too sometimes. That just remind me, I'll tell you. I'm not today. Um, We're going to try to do homework. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, 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 let me think about it, all right? Because it, it throws, it, it affects the other classes, and I want to, you know, I'll give you guys some answers for sure on these. I'm just by virtue of being here, so that, you know, hopefully. Well, let me see. Okay, um, average revenue is the revenue 
divided by units of alpha. Not knowing that I've never watched it. If you look at when a product is sold, it's manufactured suggested retail price. That's what they base the the, the re average revenue on. And then, because uh, like, if, uh, why have two separate equations for the same, the same thing? thing. Uh, give me a second. Next okay. slide on. So okay. I'll show you. But 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 and you're you're absolutely right. And, and well, why would you? I mean, it's kind of like saying you know, th this cup is blue, and then turning around and saying well. Blue is the color yeah. of the cup, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, it's monotonous, it redundant. Yeah. <laughs> picky, picky. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> All right, so, okay, let me back up. I just want to make sure you're clear. So, we have total revenue is just price times quantity. Mm -hmm. In a competitive market, we have control over quantity, not price. Mm -hmm. Price is given by the market. All right, average revenue is total revenue divided by units of output. Right? Kind of, it's the same thing. It's kind of like a mirror image of the same thing. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this looks really horrible, but it's really not. It's like, and I've had students say, you know, in my whole life, I have never ever cared or liked or been interested at all in math, and this equation all of a sudden stuff went off for me. And and maybe I don't know, maybe one or two of you will say, okay, I, I kind of, you know, wow, it makes sense. I get it. Um, and I'm, I'm, everybody will understand it, but maybe there'll be a couple that will say, hey, you know, it's not so bad. All right. This is an identity is what this is called. Okay, so we have average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity. All right, so just don't, don't worry about the equation. Think about that. Make sure that you can picture that in your head. So average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity. So total revenue, uh, let's say we sold six of them, they cost us six dollars, so our total revenue is 36. Average revenue is 36 divided by units of output, which is six, okay? So conceptualize that, make sure you can get it, all right? So average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity. Total revenue is just price times quantity. So, so, again, let me go back to the beginning. Average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity. Make sure you can see that in your head, right? Not just write it down. Make sure you get it. All right, and then total revenue, the top here, is price times quantity. Good? All right. In this equation, the quantities will cancel each other out. And what that leaves us with is average revenue <coughs> is equal to the price. Get it? Okay. And is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. well, why do you use the price? Why do you use that second equation? It's not a second equation. Mm -hmm. Total revenue is actually no, the price, price and quantity. quantity. They're synonymous. Yeah. 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 That's just breaking it down. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, so cost See, look right here. Look right here. Is that only if it's like a, like if you're, if you're doing everything, like if you're not going like down in the dumps with your 
company or whatever. Like, you mean that, that Yeah, you have to be efficient in your company, right? Because if, 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 if you're not selling enough and you're making way too much something, your price is going to be right. equal to your you, average. You got it. And we're going to talk about that in okay. one second. You got it. Okay, so is everybody okay with this? So, so price, average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity. Make sure you see that in your head. You can do, right? Total revenue is price times quantity. Right. In this equation, then, then quantities cancel each other out, which leaves us with the price, average revenue, equal to the price. Okay? All right. Now, what does that look like? A um, couple of quick definitions. I'm, I'm going to try to, let me see, i got about maybe five minutes left. Like that. Ten, you have ten minutes. Five, okay. Uh, we'll get through it. All right. So, marginal revenue. Um, don't worry about the delta. That's, I'm not interested in that right now. Marginal revenue is the revenue you get from selling one more unit. All right, so, so conceptually, you get, you know, make sure you have it in your head. So that marginal means from one more. You get marginal product waiver. You get marginal output, marginal utility. All right, marginal revenue is the revenue from selling one more unit. Okay? Let's see if, if this is working. If you sell one more unit, you get marginal revenue. What is the value of the marginal revenue? Should you sell one more unit. It should be twice what the other one is. Um, well, yeah, right. Except when you start looking at like the diminishing marginal product. Right. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Let, let me ask the question again. What you said is totally correct. If you sell another unit, it's called marginal revenue. What's the value of the marginal revenue? Is equal to what? Price. price. Right? If you sell one more unit, then the price of the good is equal to what the marginal revenue is. Oh, okay. True? Yes. All right. Everybody got it? No, I'm just kidding. Write this down, write this down, write this down. And we'll, get, we'll say this probably a uh, hundred more times in the next four weeks. For a competitive firm, price is equal to average revenue, is equal to marginal revenue. Price is equal to average revenue, is equal to marginal revenue. Right? To average is equal to marginal. So competitive firms, marginal revenue is equal to average revenue is equal to the price. Right, and I'll, let me go through the table, and I'm going to jump ahead to the putting them together, and then we'll call it a day. Um, everybody okay? All right. This is easy. This is, it looks awesome. This is what we just said. Uh, price equals marginal revenue equals average revenue. All right, so the quantity we're selling, gallon of milk or gas or whatever, okay? So a gallon, the price is $6. That's given by the market, right? So the, the milk is a $6 a gallon is driven by the Chicago market. Sales. So we don't have any control over that, all right? We sell one gallon of milk. Our total revenue, of course, is $6, all right? The average <laughs> revenue is just total revenue divided by output, so average revenue fixed. Marginal revenue, what you get for selling one more unit, also equal to price, six. All right, so you sell, next day you come in, you sell two gallons, the price is still six bucks, total revenue is 12, average revenue is 12 divided by two, six. Marginal revenue, what you get for selling the next unit, also six. Cool? Yes, ma'am. Is revenue equal to, like, gross profit? No. Okay. Close. So give me a minute. It's your, your right there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody understand this? All right. So if I sell five units, what's the marginal revenue of the fifth unit? Same as the first. Which is? Six dollars. What's the average revenue of the fourth unit I sell? Six dollars. Okay. Everybody cool with that? See where that's coming from? Okay. Write this down, and then I'll show you where the table is. Okay. 
So the goal of the firm in a competitive market, or any firm really, is to maximize profit. So we're going to produce where, remember the cost curves we talked about earlier, which we had our average face, average variable, average total, all right? So, and then there's a point somewhere where that, remember, average total cost minimizes, which is called the efficient scale, right? All right, we have revenue, which is total revenue, uh, everybody okay with that? We have total revenue, average revenue is total divided by output, margin revenue is what we get from selling one more unit. So for a competitive firm, what we want to do is produce up to where the difference between our total revenue and total cost is the greatest, and that's profit. All right, so we have, let me kind of, again, we'll go back through this again. We have two, ta or two graphs going on, or tables. Right, we have the, the total cost curve, U-shaped, uh, diminishing marginal product, average fixed cost is falling, average variable cost is rising. We have revenue, total revenue, marginal revenue, average revenue. We, you can see where that's coming from. Everybody cool? Mm -hmm. And we'll slap them together. That'll be a magic trick. And then you can go tell your boss, you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> No, don't do that. I'm kidding. Don't do that. My economics instructor said, don't do that. There's a kid in my small group communications class that's in one of your, I think he's in your ma macro class, who comes into class and starts spouting off all this stuff about all this stuff he knows about macroeconomics and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you're taking Eckhart, aren't you? He goes, yeah. And then he starts saying all this stuff. I was like, you need to talk to Eckhart before you start talking like that. Because he doesn't. He doesn't. It's, it's, no. <laughs> it's kind of sad, actually. All right, um, put your pens down, just relax for a second. All right, let me kind of tell you about this, and we'll come back to it, but I, I want you to get it in your head, and then we'll, we'll write it down. It's online and all that stuff, right? All right, there's some identities that are really important here, and this is what, we, this is what it's all about. All right, we have milk or whatever it is we're selling here, okay? We have, obviously, zero gallons. Total revenue is zero. We've sold nothing, so our total revenue is we have total cost there, which is $3. What is the total cost there? $3. What is that representative? If we've sold nothing and we have a cost, what is it? Our it's overhead. A it's a fixed cost, yeah? Right? Because we've sold nothing. So we remember that variable cost is related to units of output. We've produced nothing. Right? So that's a fixed cost, right? On day one or whatever, we, we produce nothing. It costs us $3 to rent the booth or whatever we, you know, our little area, whatever. And our total profit is a negative three, which is represented by a single fixed cost done. Right? Okay, the next day comes around. We produce one unit of milk. Okay? We sell the one unit of milk, our total revenue, six bucks, because that's the price. Okay? All right, so we, we sell our one unit. Now, our cost is starting to go up. Right? What is the difference between three and five dollars in terms of cost? I mean, obviously it's two. What is it representing? We produce one unit, and our cost goes from three to five dollars. What is that two dollars? The marginal cost. It, it true, but it's also related to output. So what is diminishing marginal three, product? Total revenue, total cost. Mm, the cost. Just think about the cost. We have that three dollars is a fixed cost, Just right? Whatever extra so the, costs were. What is that when you start to produce and your costs are to go up? What's it called? Diminishing marginal cost. Variable cost, right? Variable. So our variable cost is starting to go oh, up. Okay. Right, so the difference between here and here is variable cost. So what would that be representative of in this case? Average variable cost. Um, you mean what cost? Um, no, like labor. Uh, is that what you mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, like labor. Oh. Okay. I hired somebody to come in and work for for an hour, paid them. Okay. Well, okay. like say the first one's three dollars, and that's just renting the booth because you didn't produce any milk. So the right. second one, you might have, or maybe that was paying paying the employee on the first one, even though he didn't produce anything. Uh, could, so well, the, yeah. the second one <laughs> would be the cost of the product that you use to make. The That's milk. right, and a variable cost, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So our profit, we our total revenue six dollars. We sold one unit. Um, it costs us five dollars to make it. Our profit is a dollar. Everybody okay with that? Gotcha. All right. Um, marginal revenue. Remember what we got from selling one more unit. That's easy. Six dollars. The marginal cost. 
the cost to making that first unit or the next unit. And the marginal cost is just the difference between here and here. It goes from three to five, so it costs us two dollars to make that unit, and there it is. Right? Okay, and then the change in profit, this is a little bit weird, but it goes, you see it goes from negative three profit to plus one. So the change in profit is four dollars. It goes from minus three to one, so four dollars of change in profit. Okay? Let me do one more and then I'll tell you the punchline and then we'll get out of here. All right, so the next day we come in, we, we make two units. Um, our total revenue is at a price of $6, so we have $12 of total revenue. All right, our total cost is $8. What's the marginal cost of making the second unit? Three, Three bucks, the difference between here and here, right? Everybody okay with that? All right, um, our profit is $4, the difference between here and here, $4 in profit. Marginal revenue from selling the next unit is $6. The marginal cost is $3, the difference between here and here. All right? And then the change in profit is an additional $3. Uh, or the profit it goes from here to here. All right? All right, now here's what's important. What is rising over in this area? What's going up? Marginal cost. Why is it going up at an increasing rate? Diminishing marginal product, right? So our marginal cost curve is increasing at an increasing rate due to diminishing marginal product. How much does it cost us to make the second unit? Three bucks. How much does it cost us to make the fourth unit? Three dollars. Fourth unit? Fourth unit. Uh, fourth five unit, five, five bucks. Five How much does it cost us to make the fifth unit? Six dollars. Each time we sell another unit, right? The, the marginal profit is going to be $6, $6, $6, $6, $6. Marginal the profit? Price. As we produce one unit, it costs us 2 bucks. We produce another unit, it costs us $3. We produce another unit, it costs us $4. Our marginal cost curve is rising, rising, rising. Our marginal profit, each time we sell a unit, is $6, $6, $6, $6. So we're going to increase our output until marginal revenue, marginal cost are the same. If I produce um, a sixth unit, how much does it cost me? Seven dollars. So how much do I get for it? You have to pay them, basically. Uh, if, if I produce a sixth unit, how much is the marginal cost? Right there. Seven. Seven. Seven bucks. How much is the marginal profit? Six. Would I produce the, that unit? No. It cost me seven bucks, but I'm only getting six. So how much am I going to produce? I'm going to keep producing up to where my marginal revenue and my marginal cost are equal. Okay, uh, I gotta stop, but be back on Tuesday, we'll pick it up there. Also, I would recommend really highly, to, and, and do what you want, but print this off and get it. Video. Video, yeah, there you go. It's online. Yeah, make sure, it's online, but make